Hey everybody, Cory down here, waving a little bit more than usual, but welcome to the video. I wanted to give a quick guide on corrupted items as they haven't really been explained and there's not really explanation in the game anywhere. This was a video suggested by Dark Neve, and I figured it'd be a nice quick video to hold you over until I get my Thules video out. Now corrupted items are unique items that are pretty rare in the game. You won't see them in Madness 0, but Madness 1 onwards, and if you play Obelisk or Weekly modes, you will start seeing them. They are souped up items that you can acquire throughout the game. One big thing to note is that these will not appear in regular shops. They will appear in corruption shops, shops on the map nodes, and even the Traveler's Caravan, but they will not appear in the town shops. So what are corrupted items? Well, they are items that are really souped up from their regular counterparts so let's just go ahead and take a look at the butcher's knife here it normally does one charge of bleed but if we go to the corrupted version it'll do plus one damage and plus two bleed which is a substantial upgrade now if we want to look at a more powerful epic card and see how that increases archmage book lets you play two spells per turn and every time you play those spells you draw one but if you get the upgraded version you will be able to play three times per turn whenever you play a spell, gain one draw, or you draw one card, and you gain one powerful. And that's affected by perks as well, so you'll likely be getting two to three powerful. Now, some of the more fun ones are like Fountain Pen. If you find that this one corrupted, it can almost win the game for you. Because two times per turn, whenever you play a book, you draw a card and all heroes in the party gain one extra draw and one powerful which is like giving everybody two extra cards per turn. And I've even played this on Bree because it's so good. And Bree just playing battle plans, giving everybody two extra draw per turn, and she's one on going first. You can see how good that is. But the real fun ones come with the mythic ones, or the mythic items. We'll just go take a quick look here at the Mirror of Cassandra. And this is already an amazing item. Whenever you play a card, put a copy of that into your hand, cost zero and vanish. You can copy 8 cost, 9 cost cards, get a free copy. When you get the corrupted version, you get to do that twice per turn. You can play a card, get a copy of it, and then play that copy card and get another copy of it. You're just multiplying. You're becoming a boss yourself with that one. You're playing 3 or 4 to the same uber card per turn. You're becoming an enraged boss because enraged Ignito, he'll just start playing 4 meter showers per turn. You can just be like, oh, I'm enraged Ignito down, and I'm just going to play 3 meter showers in the same turn. So how often do these appear? I've got a great little chart here that I'm going to pop up. So they start appearing in Madness 1. They have a 3% base chance to appear with a 0.3% modifier each Madness level you go up. And in Obelisk mode slash weekly mode, the base is 3% and you'll get an additional 2% at Obelisk mode 4, bringing up to 5% and an additional 3% at 8 Obelisk plus. So I believe that's I believe they're cumulative. It's either you get 6% because they're not additive or you get 8%. I'm not exactly sure, so don't quote me on that. Base or corrupted items appearing. And then when you take battles, you'll be given the option to do corrupted shops that give you a 5% drop chance of corrupted items. And corrupted shops that are exotic give you a 10% chance. You may ask, but what are corrupted shops? Well, I have a weekly save right over here to show you that where... We'll head into the weekly. Oh, that's obelisk mode. We'll go into the weekly right over here. And by taking this top pass here, we'll see that there's an exotic shop. So if I went and took this, every item in that shop is going to have a 13% chance of being corrupted because it's 3% base for the weekly and 10% plus for having the exotic equipment shop, which makes exotic equipment shops in weeklies extremely, extremely valuable as corruption rewards. So, one more thing is, what if I want to play with corrupted items, but I don't want the game to be more difficult? There is a very easy solution to that, and it's how I usually play the game with friends, even ones that are starting out, is you'll want to go over here and go to the madness menu of starting a new game. And also what you want to do is just click Impending Doom on. It makes it so your rounds are limited to only going to round nine, where round seven, you'll get a two turn Doom counter. But you'll usually finish most of your combats by then, most of your bosses hopefully finish by then. And by doing that, you will have uh, corrupted items appearing in your game. You could even turn on Decadence if you want, which halves all your healing done pretty much. 
I'd only turn this one on if you have a lot of perks unlocked. Restricted power, I wouldn't even turn that one on because that's frustrating and takes away a lot of the fun that these corrupted items are going to be giving you. Uh, even Madness 1 isn't too hard, but it does increase the monster's abilities quite a bit. But that is my crash course on corrupted items. I hope you enjoy. Thank you, Dark Knee, for suggesting the video and getting the information for me from some of the developer's old posts. And I hope you all look forward to the Stools video as well. And have a great time playing out across the obelisk. Let me know your corrupted item combos that you've totally blown away the game with. Later.